All right, so let's look at the aspect of LinkedIn that might be valuable to you besides the personal aspect, which we've looked at. Now there's this business aspect. And do you see there's all these icons at the top and a little dividing line? Then there's work. So there you go. All of the stuff regarding businesses is going to be there, and we'll look as much as we can. But also, right next to it is upgrade, free upgrade to premium. And it's so funny how they market this, because obviously premium means you're going to pay for something. And there is the uh, LinkedIn uh, premium account. Uh, we'll look at the price a little later, but I think it's like $29 a month. 69 now? Okay. Well, for what? You get a lot more access, a lot more features, the ability to connect with more people, more features. Uh, for most people, you don't need it because it can be pretty expensive. It seems like it's, what was that, $69 a month or so? That's a lot of money. But you might use it for a little while to get what you need out of it and then cancel. Now, we're going to skip that, of course. I'm not asking you to pay for anything in any of these classes. But you might look in that at some point. But just like in Facebook, you get more results, more quality results in Facebook when you pay, when you boost your posts and such. When we talked about Facebook, we talked about the, the value of boosting posts. Uh, LinkedIn, to get some of the powerful features like the powerful job hunting or job posting features, uh, or the more powerful connection features to be able to email people directly and such, it's under premium. Uh, you can go look at that on your own. So they'll tell you prices there later. But anyway, what we can do here for the moment under work. More LinkedIn products. So they've got uh, LinkedIn uh, has, uh, before it got acquired by Microsoft, LinkedIn acquired other things to help improve its business features. One of them, for example, is here under learning. Under work and learning, it takes you over to their um, to their online learning system. Um, does, does anyone know about or remember a site called lynda.com? What was it? lynda.com. So the that site is an online training account where you go in and learn about HTML, social media, Google AdWords, and such. It is not free. Um, I haven't checked the latest prices, but it's usually $99 a year. And LinkedIn bought lynda.com several years ago. They paid like a billion dollars for it or something, literally. So lynda.com is now integrated with LinkedIn and and here it is it's you go online and I want to learn how Google AdWords works well there's a course about that or creating websites visual thinking strategies there's a lot of these video tutorials with lessons and assignments to really educate yourself on all of these topics um, somewhere it'll tell you a price but you can start with one month free, free trial, and that's under this work link. So their learning system is very good. It's been around for like probably 15 years. They were acquired by LinkedIn maybe two years ago, and it's like the number one place to learn any of this technology stuff. Here's where we also see groups. So if you want to connect, if you want to go to a place where people are congregating on a topic, we've got our groups, our groups view right here. So under groups, um, these are the groups that I've currently connected to. And then these are the, um, then there's Discover, where you can go off and find these different groups on different topics. Question? Are there any costs associated with groups, or is it pretty much the learning? The learning one is where there's that cost. And groups, 
are either join right away, or some of them say ask to join, and then someone has to approve you, but there should not be any cost on that either. <clears throat> so I'm making our notes over here under work, work button, learn, lynda.com online training on every topic. I've seen video, uh, video lectures there on learning how to get the most out of eBay, for example. So maybe I'm selling stuff on eBay, and I want to learn how to use eBay the best. There is a video there. Now, it does say one month free trial. So maybe get into that and like drink a lot of Red Bull and watch a lot of these videos and get as many of them as you can, as much knowledge out of these videos for that one free month. Groups. I'll just mention the ones that I think are most important. Uh, groups like Google Plus communities and Facebook groups. Meet people. Uh, some are auto join, some are ask to join. Similar to what I talked about in Google Plus or the other networks, if you're going to get followers, you need to have your account set up. You need to have your picture, you need to have your text, etc. It needs to be something than the basic account. With groups, especially if you're going to try to join a group that seems very valuable to you, you better have your account set up to the minimal level. Your name and your job and your job description or whatever you think is relevant for people to know about you. So that then when you try to join, someone will check. Okay, let's see, who is this person trying to check, trying to join this group? Oh, they're not really about our topic. They're not about web design, so we will not approve them. You can try to join it again later, and then they'll check you again later. But um, when you want to join a specific topic, a specific group, you should be interested in that group, and you should have your account set up so that you talk about that stuff, and it shows that you know or, or you want to talk about that content. So in my case here, there's a few that I've joined here, and then there's also Discover, where it pops up, you might be interested in this because of these people. These two are in that group, and you have similar um, skills and such, so you might want to try to join this one, Inside Higher Education. So yeah, I'm, an, I'm an instructor, they, they, they too are related to colleges and such. So it's recommending. You might be interested in this uh, group about colleges, so I can ask to join. Educase, web designer, and HTML developer. All of these seem to say ask to join. So I, I uh, right there, social media marketing, 1.8 million members. So if I want to learn more social media, if I want to sort of promote myself, uh, I might want to join that one. And seven other people that I know are already there. How would you search for groups? When I go over there, it just says discover groups. When I click it, it says we've got no, just no suggestions. Is that because I haven't made any posts? Let me give it a shot here. Um, I'm going to do search. And I'll say cooking. Now, then I do see all results. more groups yeah it's not as intuitive it's kind of weird they should let you search easier in that screen but the way to find a group is first go back home then you search and then change the results more to groups so all of the groups regarding that keyword will then appear 560 so to find a group in home screen, click search box, search a topic, then in results, click more, select group results only. 
So I can search these keywords and try to find all of these groups about that topic of my business. Then if it says simply join, I can join. Or if it says ask to join, someone will check my account and vet me and confirm that I'm a good match for their group. Based on, um, based on also the number of, of members, some might be more valuable than others. Used cooking oil group, very interesting. The chef forum, pastry, culinary, um, food blogger connection, ren rendering industry community, interesting. So you see everyone's got their own niche in LinkedIn. So once I find one of these, let's say the food blogger, I click in there. Um, you might not see very much until you actually join. And this one says, ask to join. So all of that is under work groups. Slide share. Uh, uh, that's a valuable one, I think. Let me note it. Slide share. Uh, Slideshare.net is this website that has existed for a while and then LinkedIn bought them. What Slideshare is, it's the YouTube of PowerPoint. So YouTube is the place where people go to watch videos on everything. Either, you know, fun, weird things, or if you don't know, you can use YouTube to go find tutorials on things for free. You can go to YouTube to learn something for free. People upload so many great videos on so many topics for free. YouTube. Well, uh, SlideShare is like that, but for PowerPoint. People create PowerPoint presentations and upload them to SlideShare for free. Let's see that link and see why it would be valuable to you. Click SlideShare. So at the top there, click, click Work and then click SlideShare. This is going to be valuable for you to you for two reasons. The first one is you're going to find a variety of presentations on a variety of topics that might be interesting to you. Learn something. Educate yourself or update your skills. And what I see here is these article or these things. What else? Carol Smith. Inside Google's Numbers 2017, PowerPoint Tips Weekly, Acing Your Interview. So one of the purposes of SlideShare for free you can uh, read a variety of presentations or view presentations. You can view a variety of presentations. Learn something new. So I often read articles about the, the six. Uh, the, a common trait of many successful people is that they read a lot. They're always reading. Reading something new just to expand their knowledge, to learn something, to be successful. I hear that all the time. That you know, Rich people, successful people uh, uh, just read a lot. And therefore, under here, here's, a, here's something that might be useful to me. So, um, in my interview. I've got an interview coming up. I can read that and maybe it'll help me to do well in the interview. The other aspect is you can create and upload presentations to get viewers. If your PowerPoint, your presentation, is valuable it can go viral all of these presentations that are currently here are not just there 
out of the goodness of their heart, out of the kindness of their heart to give away free knowledge, I'll, I'll check a couple, but most likely in the presentation, it's got the footnote of their website. It's got their email address of contact us. Maybe on the first screen or the last screen, it has some information, something like, for more information, don't forget to check our website. So all of these are stealth advertisements. All of these are giving away something for free in hopes of getting something back. Just like I said earlier in the day, you give something away for free, a free link to an article, a free presentation, you give something away for free and you might get something back. A call, a link to your site, I mean a visit to your site, a sale. Like in the real world, I give away a free cupcake because then I know I'm going to sell three of them once they're hooked. So I haven't seen any of these yet. I'm going to select this one here, PowerPoint Tips Weekly. So clicking on any of those presentations. Watch preview. OK, this one's a little different. It's kind of an advertisement back to lynda.com. OK, never mind on that one. Oh, yeah, OK, F uh, featured courses from LinkedIn Learning. Yeah, never mind on that one. Uh, let's see one of these other ones. Um, yeah. So they're pretty much all free? They should be, except these ones that are over over on LinkedIn Learning. Um, let's see here. An annual analysis of the peak shopping season. So let's just see what this one's like. So clicking on that one, this has 40 slides, um, 2017 holiday survey retail and transition. Uh, so there's a description down at the bottom. There's people commenting. This has got 71 comments, 1,400 likes. 1,400 likes on a, on a boring presentation about shopping? Well, again, your particular presentation, especially if it's a professional one, may be found by people and liked and commented on and shared and goes viral and gets you sales or customers. This assumes, of course, you can manage PowerPoint to make presentations. Economic outlook, holiday shopping season accounts for more than one quarter of the annual US retail sales. One trillion dollars in sales. And comparing last year and this year during the recession. Okay, so yeah, it could be like super boring, just all of this stuff, but what's happening here is for 71 people, they commented something, 1,400 likes, <coughs> shared over to LinkedIn, shared over to Facebook, shared over to Twitter, going viral, spreading this out to more people. <coughs> and then I bet on the last page, it's got some sort of like credit that they give themselves right here about the survey. <coughs> A link back to their site so not exactly this is the same case but the idea is a sort of a stealth ad. <coughs> a sort of a stealth ad you give away something for free and um, put your credit into it your link and then that could get you traffic back to your <coughs> website so uh, you can create and upload your presentations. Make sure <coughs> you add links back to your site anywhere in the presentation. <coughs> to hopefully get traffic back to your site. So any of this free stuff that you're giving away, always make sure you put some sort of link back to your site. Let's say like this. Let's say I'm a music teacher. I want to get hired to teach kids music. I'm going to be on social media. I'm going to be on LinkedIn. I'm going to be giving away free things like maybe a simple three, maybe a simple five slide presentation. The first slide is just, you know, the title of it saying, you know, top three tips for beginning musicians. 
Uh, then the three slides in the middle are the actual tips. And then the final slide is about me. I have 20 years experience. I'm based in San Diego. First consultation is free. So out of a five slide presentation, three with real content and two is just little advertisements. I upload it here. I put it, I also share it on my LinkedIn. I put it on my Twitter. I put it on my Facebook. I'm creating this marketing content as a music instructor to try to get more clients, to try to get more kids that I'm going to uh, tutor in music. So, yeah. Yeah, these search terms, this content that you upload to all of the networks could get picked up by the search, by the search engines, like by Google. So, try to create a light version of your product to give away and add your credits contact info share to all networks in as the goal or for the goal of um, results, which could be you get followed on the network, you get a like, you get a phone call, you get traffic to your website, you get an email, you get hired. Obviously easier said than done, but as I've said, I teach this, but I'm also part of a, the, a company that we do this. And we do these things for these clients separate kinds of clients. One is a jewelry designer, one is a restaurateur, one is a salon owner, etc. We have these different clients. One is a biotech firm. They've all got these different uh, necessities of how social media will work for them. So we use the different social networks in different ways to try to reach their audience. And it can be challenging. You know, the biotech firm, they are focused on other, from, from their firm connecting to like-minded firms. You know, they're all about stem cell research and all of that. So this is not a company that's for the regular people. They're connecting to hospitals or other research firms to try to form these connections. So we have to use social media for them in that case, a little bit more focused on LinkedIn with their slide share. Um, aspect to put out like a condensed version of their research paper so that then um, they can connect with the company that is much more valuable to them uh, to read the whole article and such or get hired or etc. Lastly in this work area you see at the very bottom create a company page. So my, my personal profile can then have one or many company pages. I said earlier, I don't think that's a great of a, of a value to you as the personal one. Um, because really to get the most out of it as a company page, that's when really the premium LinkedIn works best, which is expensive. Looking at it briefly, on that screen, it's exactly what you think it is. I'm going to create a company. It's going to have a link. I'm going to verify I'm the official representative. On the next screen, it'll ask me to fill in my hours of operation, my location, just like every other sort of business listing on every other site. But then you have to do the extra effort of managing that business, usually promoting or boosting your business, where I think, for most of us, using the personal aspect of LinkedIn. As the person, as Victor, I'm trying to get clients for the company, PMD Interactive. Mm -hmm. As the person, Janet, I'm trying to get uh, customers for my law firm. Instead of trying to create Janet's law firm here and trying to do that uphill battle of a business trying to connect with a client, probably for most of us, it'll be the person connecting to the client. There's also learn more. I'm going to put this link in the notes, but again, I don't 
creating a LinkedIn university page. Ah, that's weird. Oh, never mind. Yeah, new university. So, question. So, someone like me with three unrelated businesses, should I mean, is there a way for me to set up three separate personal posts as opposed to the business posts which require management? Or, or I just got to realize if I'm going to use LinkedIn in that manner. I mean, clearly, this would work for my CPA practice. I can do that as an individual. But I can't mix all three in one personal profile. It'll get too confusing. Exactly. Uh, so you might have the special case there where you're where you're dealing with three different industries, let's say, right. on one account. So um, I don't have an easy answer for that. You could create three different accounts with three different email addresses. Remember, this requires a valid email address. So as long as you have a different email address that you can verify, you can have three different LinkedIn's. Okay. And that's how you can keep them separate. Okay. Hmm. So what I want to say here, um, end with um, the focus of LinkedIn I would say do it as personal but then also here um, read up on all the details their their help screen I think is very useful to answer more of the details and so all, after all of the lecture short answer use LinkedIn as a person to build you to build up your business person to person so better for a service business you say that again better for a service business yeah because if I'm uh, if I work at Qualcomm well I'm not promoting Qualcomm uh, but maybe I'm trying to get a better job later so I'm using it again as a person, yeah.